<laughs> Hello, I'm William Gallagher and this is 58 Keys, which is always for writers like you and me who use Macs and iPhones and iPads. But this time, imagine the focus shifting just a little bit away from Macs, iPhones and iPads and back onto the word writers. I mean, not completely. We're still talking about using Apple gear to write, but this is the first of five special editions of 58 Keys about people instead of devices. Um, if you're watching as it originally goes out, this is Christmas week 2020, and there are five people to meet, one every day. If you're watching this later, then, well, it isn't Christmas, but you still have all five. They'll be in a playlist. Later in the week, across the week, we get to talk with writers from television, stage, novels, non-fiction, and quite a bit more. You've got to subscribe. How can you miss any of that? Right now, though, we're starting with Ken Case. He's CEO of the Omni Group. And while you will hear him in a minute insisting he's not a writer, he is really. He and the Omni Group wrote and developed Omni Outliner, a Mac, iPhone and iPad app that very, very many people plan novels and articles in and which I have planned out 60 or so scripts and close to 800 events. Ken Case, Omni Group, thank you so much for being on 58 Keys. Oh, well, thank you, William. Thank you for inviting me. This is well, my I, pleasure. There is, a, there is a key reason, really, which is obviously Omni Outliner, but also 58 Keys and really me. We talk about writing tools mostly in order to avoid actually doing any writing. You seem <laughs> to be worse, though. <laughs> Rather than write things, you make writing tools and things. Did you make it to scratch an itch for yourself? Are you a secretly an outlining planning novelist? Well, <laughs> definitely not a novelist. <laughs> There's not a, yeah. Uh, I don't have the writing itch that, uh, that true writers have, but, uh, but I've always, uh, put my thoughts into outlines as I was just trying to organize my thoughts and, and think about what I'm building. In fact, really writing code in some ways is a lot like building an outline. Like you often start out with the high level structures of what you're trying to build and then you're breaking it down into smaller components and, uh, and then you're putting it into code that becomes something on the screen. And uh, outline, you know, writing an outline can help me with that process. Yeah, but hang on, you've been doing this a long time. You don't need to plan it out. It just comes out of you, doesn't it? No, no, not at all. <laughs> I have to plan it out for sure. Um, I mean, it doesn't, not everything has to be planned out. It's true. It, with enough experience, you can sometimes sit down and just start building something. Um, but, uh, but there are a lot of things that really do need some planning. And it helps if I sit down and take some time and, and, at least write down my thoughts and maybe a couple different ideas of, uh, you know, approaches around how we might might do something. The Omni Group as, as a whole has been doing this and you've been doing this for, is it 30 years now or more? Well, so uh, we started working together on some projects before we founded the Omni Group in about 1989. So that's been 30 <laughs> years, I guess. That was on the next platform. Uh, but then we we actually registered omnigroup.com, and that's sort of what I consider the uh, uh, the Omni Group birthday or whatever birth date in ninety uh, two. So that's twenty eight years ago now. Oh, that's well, that's not that many. Uh, how far into <laughs> that was, was Omni Outliner an early uh, product for you? It was early in our uh, in our Mac in the Mac part of our uh, experience. So. Um, Maybe I should give a little bit of just a brief history. I, I did mention already that we started out working together on the Next platform. Next being the platform that Steve Jobs founded when he got kicked out of Apple. So um, he was no longer able to you know, continue working on Macintosh and uh, decided to build Next computers. Like, what's next? All right, here you go. Um, and so he designed a Unix workstation that was very powerful for its time. He was not allowed to compete with Apple in terms of sort of consumer level devices. So he went for the high end education market, I think was one of his early targets. And uh, at that time, I was working at the University of Washington. And so I was in the education market. And, uh, and I saw these next machines and I'm like, wow, these are, I just fell in love. They're they incredibly powerful. 
they had a great Unix uh, layer uh, for underpinnings, which as a technologist I care about a lot, um, having a, a solid operating system that it was based on instead of the toy operating systems that I thought the PC and Mac were at that time. And uh, so fast forward, um, next itself did not succeed very well in the market. We did, we, and I should note, in that first decade of Omni's life, we were building uh, products like our web browser in the beginning of the World Wide Web. Um, so, you know, we had a web browser before Netscape, before <laughs> Internet Explorer. Uh, but then um, when Next kind of was failing as a company and looking for, well, what are we going to do now? Uh, Apple ended up buying Next, and that became the underpinnings of the new Mac OS X operating system. But it took a few years to get there. So Steve came along with the acquisition, Steve Jobs, and uh, ended up in charge of Apple within a very short period of time, like six months after he got there. He was the interim CEO, high CEO. And then, uh, uh, and then we started working towards Mac OS X. So uh, as we were looking at the launch of Mac OS X and thinking about, well, what? what can we help contribute to make this platform succeed? We wanna make sure that it doesn't fail the way the next platform failed. We started thinking about building productivity apps that, that weren't Microsoft Office. You know, Microsoft was already committed to being on the platform, uh, but things that could help people uh, think and communicate. And so Omni Outliner and Omni Grapple were two of our earliest tools there. I gotta say, I mean, I, there, there is no day I can get through without Omni Focus, your to-do app. I don't think there has been a day in a long time that I haven't used Omni Outliner. And Omni has got me out of various, uh, the project manager has got me out of some scrapes. But Omni Graph <laughs> is the one I just don't understand. Yeah, so. But speaking of not understanding things, there you are. Uh, you just said Microsoft had already committed. So Microsoft Word was coming to Mac OS X and, and it was already on the Mac. Word has an outliner built in. I don't like it. But if I'm a writer who loves outlining and I've got Word, how do you even make somebody look at yours? And, and why is it worth getting a separate outliner? So our outliner was really designed with outlining as its primary use case. Like what you're trying to do as an activity is build an outline. Uh, and, uh, you know, I mentioned that, that I've been thinking in outlines for a long time. In fact, the first outlining editor that I used was Emacs in, uh, I think, 1985 or so. And there, it had an outlining mode. Emacs is a really powerful uh, Unix text editor uh, that's written in Lisp, and you could extend it by writing more Lisp code. And so one of the uh, extension modes that people wrote was this outlining mode where you could build a thought, uh, collapse, uh, you know, identify which things were the topics and the subtopics, and you could collapse the subtopics. It was kind of as simple as that. And, um, but for me, that, that turned out to be a really powerful way to start organizing my thoughts and being able to zoom in and out in terms of what level you're at. Um, fast forward a bit on the next platform. Uh, of course, Emacs still exists. In fact, it still exists today, and I can use it that way. But on the next platform, there was an app by a third party called uh, Lighthouse Design, and they were. Uh, they built uh, an app called Concurrence, which was the uh, the predecessor to Keynote, really. So um, it's for you know giving a presentation, and and in it, as part of its uh, work, it had this outlining mode. Uh, well, I didn't really, I didn't do presentations. I never made slides and things like that, but I used Concurrence all the time because I loved this outlining mode, having an outliner where. Um, where you could write down all your thoughts, easily collapse things around, easily just drag and drop the paragraphs to move them to where you want them to be. Um, you know, treating those uh, as sort of first level objects and structure, part of your structure rather than uh, as an afterthought, which is how I feel like Word kind of treats outlining. Uh, uh, well, so fast forward some more as, as then we, uh, Lighthouse Design got acquired by Sun and kind of fell by the wayside in terms of their own apps. And they never made the jump from Next to Mac OS X. So that was one of the gaps as I realized, you know, I, I was looking at, well, I have this outlining piece of my workflow that I'm very dependent on on the Next. How do I do this on the Mac now? Uh, well, I guess we need to build one. And so 
we ended up building on the outliner. Hmm. Uh, mm, mine's gone off in five different directions here. Uh, <laughs> one of which is, I don't feel so bad about the next thing I was going to say. I mean, I've already said I rely on on the outline. I, I love your apps. I'm going to confess now, I, I actually hate outlining. I'm one of these writers who would rather just get on with it. And if that means throwing stuff away at the end, fine. Uh, <laughs> but I, I use it a huge amount for things. It sounds similar to you. you. You don't sound like you write much, but you organize ideas for it. It's like a yeah, not a mind map, but it's it's a, a thought processing app. Uh, why call it an outliner then, and put off all the writers who are like me? <laughs> That's a good question, I guess. Uh, I, obviously, it was not the most creative name. <laughs> I just went for what am I building? I'm building an outline. All right, here's our outliner. And it, uh, we were, uh, how do we brand that along with all of the rest of our products? Well, we put Omni in front of it. So it's Omni Outliner. <laughs> uh, as simple as that. Omni Outliner, Omni Web, Omni Graffle, <laughs> Omni Plan. I'd say I'm honestly surprised how many people I know who tried Omni Outliner only because they loved Omni Focus, your to do app, and wanted to see what else you'd done. And in fact, that happened with me. I just kind of tried it, see what you did. I tried the trial of, I can't remember the version number now, tried the trial and on the end of the first day, I bought it. Uh, and then the very next day you brought out the, a big update uh, and just, I got it for free. And things. So I love the way that you do that. Um, but isn't that expensive for you? I mean, I might've grumbled that there was a new version, but I, <laughs> no, I might've, I might not have bought it that day then, but you know, you could have got some more cash out of me. You're not ringing the market full of money. <laughs> no, no. Well, I mean, it's, it's never been our goal to optimize the amount of cash that we can get out of our products. I mean, obviously we need to make a living. So we, we can't just give away our software for free and we do need that living, you know, our work to be sustainable. So when people buy our software, you know, they're buying, they're paying for the work that we have already put into it effectively. Uh, and we do give free updates for a while because we don't think we should be charging people constantly for it uh, in, in the model, at least where you're paying sort of upfront for the software, paying for what we've done so far. Um, but yeah, when somebody has just bought a software, uh, software package, um, or even if somebody, you know, if leaving computers in this whole field aside altogether, if you buy a car and <laughs> you invest in that, and then the next day a new car is announced, you're going to have a bit of buyer's remorse around it. And that's the last thing we want our customers to ever feel about any of our products is any sort of buyer's remorse. So we have uh, a 30 day money back guarantee in the first place. We have the trial so people can hopefully avoid uh, buying it before they, you know, ever even having the notion of remorse. But if they did have some sort of remorse, they, they have the option of re uh, returning it. And, um, and then we'd like to give six months worth of free upgrades so that anybody who's purchased recently doesn't feel like, oh, I timed that wrong and I now I'm being asked to pay again. Um, yeah. I mean, that's great that you do that. And there are companies I'm sure that don't. Uh, in fact, Apple doesn't. Apple will sell you the latest thing until the minute it isn't the latest thing anymore. Um, but what about. Now we also offer um, subscriptions, I should mention. Uh, so people who just want to dip their toe in the water or don't ever want to worry about timing whatsoever, they don't, they're not paying for all of the work to date. They just pay on a monthly basis for the work we're doing right now and, uh, and they get the latest thing, whatever that happens to be. Actually, I knew about that for OmniFocus, the to-do app, but I didn't realize there was a subscription that covered Omni Outliner as well, or am I misunderstanding? Yeah, now, we, there is now, and it's, um, it covers Omni Outliner on both platforms. Uh, across the board. And it's only, let me just double check my number. It's $5 a month for Omni Outliner. And it gives you the latest version on both Mac and iPad and iPhone, or all, all the platforms. And um, and you never have to worry about paying an upgrade. But it is more expensive in the long run, I think, than, than paying upfront, but it's less of an upfront investment. So we just offer the people the choice. We don't, we don't force them down either path. How about a nicer way of getting my money? Um, it seems to me, apart from uh, OmniFocus, which I'm at, it's kind of for everybody, uh, probably. Uh, you have OmniGraffle that's very clearly for graphics. Uh, you have OmniPlan, which is very clearly for project management and Omni Outliner, 
for writers and the like. But in none of those areas do you offer sequels or spin-offs. There isn't an omni word processor, for example. I would buy an omni word processor. <laughs> You're letting me down. Well, we'll have to keep that in mind. <laughs> I mean, I there have been times where I've really wanted to write some new apps. In fact, we have uh, we have had more apps at sometimes in the past. Like we had an Omni Graph Sketcher was a, an app that we built about a decade ago, and we we're really proud of uh, how great it was. But what we realized um, a decade ago is when, uh, you know, 2010 was when the iPad was introduced, and when we went from trying to support our products on just the Mac platform to now trying to support it across the Mac, iPad, uh, and even iPhone now, uh, we realized we were just spread too thinly <laughs> and we needed to do something about that. And so we focused down on uh, onto some core products for a bit. I'm really hopeful that with some of the technology advancements we've seen recently, that we're able to save some work, build, build code that works across platforms a bit better, and maybe we can start expanding back out a bit to, uh, to consider some new products. But we also still have a lot to do on our existing products. So I don't, <laughs> I don't want to get ahead of myself there. I don't want to end up in the same place. Okay, uh, but you are adding automation to everything. Um, I love automation. I have so many scripts doing so many things, Keyboard Maestro, Hazel, all of this stuff. But I don't use on automation in Omni yet because I'm looking at an outline and I'm thinking, what can I possibly automate in Omni Outliner? Uh, are you automate? What are people automating specifically in Omni Outliner? Sure. So I should go back actually uh, and explain that Omni Focus was originally built as an automation of Omni Outliner. Uh, so uh, Omni Outliner was, uh, you know, as I mentioned, it was our one of our first apps for the for Mac OS X, along with Omni Web and Omni Graffle. And as we added more features to it, well, one of the features we added was Apple Script support and automation. And in uh, well, about 2005, maybe, we started hearing that a lot of people were using a set of automation scripts that Ethan Schoonover had written called Kinkless GTD. And it was a way to automate this process of tracking, uh, you know, GTD, uh, which was part of the, uh, the project management, um, what, what I think, the mental structure of project management that David Allen proposed that we, you know, that inspired on the focus. Um, has you plan things in projects so you're kind of building an outline of your tasks. And of course, Outliner is perfect for that. And then it has you execute those things in contexts. So you would tag each of those things that you were trying to do for a project and say, okay, well, what context does that need to get done in? And you would then go to your context list, li list all of those things. Um, and then when you're doing the work, so you plan the work as one phase, you're doing the work uh, and you do the work by context, which is much more efficient. So when you're at the grocery store, you, you're, or you know, when you're out running errands, you're running all of the errands that need to be run, not just the ones for a particular project where you go out and then you come back and realize, oh, well, I also have this other project that needs an errand. So I go out again and then come back. Uh, uh, and this notion applies to mental work as well, right? Like I have a mental context of I'm writing code versus I'm uh, writing a blog post and those are kind of different mental gears. And if I'm thinking about writing a blog post, it's easier for me to write several blog posts in a row or to fix several bugs in a row um, by grouping those things into context, even if they're in un unrelated projects. So this uh, set of automation scripts for on the outliner, uh, the Kinkless GTD scripts would take your uh, plan stuff, look at the column that said, which context is this in? And then it would build a, a parallel tree of, well, here are all your contexts and their items. And then if you check things off in either place, it would sync that up and make sure the other one was checked off. Uh, and we realized, oh, when it came time to build Omni Outliner 4, uh, we thought, well, how can we make this an even better tool for, you know, for this really popular use case that people are doing, uh, this GTV stuff? And we realized, well, maybe it would be better if it's not a set of add-on scripts if it's really just its own built-in app and then you can integrate more deeply with the system you can have things come up become due and show you when they're overdue and all that kind of stuff and that that was the genesis of omnifocus um, 
So back to use cases for Omni Outliner, that's just an example of something we didn't think of in advance that somebody might want to do with it. But uh, but when somebody gets an itch and they realize, well, here's here's this great tool and I can automate it to help with my specific workflow, uh, then we like having a, a toolkit that lets them build what they want. Um, Steve Jobs used to talk about uh, an analogy with uh, the bicycle of the mind, uh, where you know there had there was a study that had been done of what was the most efficient way to, uh, animal for traveling, how much energy were they using, and you know there were all these different animals lined up, and humans were not um, the most efficient of those animals in terms of locomotion, uh, unless you put a human on a bicycle. <laughs> At which point they became much more efficient than uh, than all of these other animals, um, and he liked to think of computers as being the bicycle of the mind, and that uh, you know is something that has really inspired our use of uh, Omni Outliner or our, our development of Omni Outliner and of automation uh, and letting people kind of build things that make their themselves more productive. Mm. Yeah, again, mine in several places. I'm not going to pick. I think the one I want to pick on is quite small, but um, just for that, you're, you mentioned about um, sharing code and things, and that's obviously, we're talking about Apple Silicon. For it. Um, There are two last things I want to ask you about, and they're both to do with Apple Silicon and the Omni Group. Um, you, the Omni Group was featured in Apple's presentation about this, and you, as a developer, were exactly as enthusiastic as everybody now i know apple's hardly going to feature anybody go yeah but you were exceptional in that <laughs> with a harp why didn't we see more of the harp what did you do with the harp is there an omni harp app <laughs> <laughs> well uh they just saw the harp <laughs> because of where we were filming this uh <laughs> this work and they're like oh do you actually play that harp and well, yeah. Do you think you could play a few notes? We're like, well, sh sure. Uh, let me pull that out. <laughs> um, the curse of playing the harp is uh, every time you pull out the harp, it, it needs tuning again. <laughs> but um, so, well, I can probably at least do a quick arpeggio, and that that would be okay. <laughs> so that is what I ended up doing in that presentation. It was a great moment, actually. Uh, it felt very joyous. Um, yeah, and the impression I have from you and all the other developers is that you, that's how you feel about Apple Silicon and the future of the Mac. But oh, it's amazing! Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> short, shortest description is Apple Silicon Macs are a lot faster. That's I think that's a fair shorthand. I can see that being great for uh, developers as you're coding intensive apps. People edit videos and fine, but uh, here I am as a writer. Am I going to even notice a difference in, say, on the outliner on my expensive new Mac? So, using an app like Omni Outliner, I think it wasn't slow before. At least I hope you haven't found it to be slow. <laughs> and so, what you're going to find, though, is it's not just about uh, how fast things get done, but it's how efficiently they get done. On the CPU, so these CPUs are so much the the M1 processor, the uh, or system on a chip that uh, that Apple has developed for these new Macintoshes is incredibly energy efficient. So um, yes, it's nice that it's also super fast. Like for me as a developer, um, I pull out this new MacBook Air that I just got uh, two days ago, and if I build uh, on the outliner on here, for example. Uh, I can get it built from scratch in uh, a faster time than the most powerful Mac before, even the Mac Pro, you know, the $8,000 machine. <laughs> and so that's amazing. But, um, but the other amazing thing is that it's just not using nearly as much energy. So your battery life is, uh, takes you through the entire day. Even if you're watching video, the battery life is just going and going. Uh, and so... Uh, so it's not just about well, yes, I can um, I can get two compiles done in the same time that I could previously do one, but it means my battery is going to last twice as long <laughs> uh, because the, the processor is so much more efficient. 
when we can go back to coffee shops, we writers can go where we're supposed to and sit there in Starbucks and use, well, we don't even use their power anymore. Yeah, you can go to a park bench or something. You don't have to be in a coffee shop. <laughs> There is actually, I said sorry that that was the last thing about absolutely but there is one thought uh, you've just put into my head about your writing because uh, you say you're not a writer but you mentioned a blog person and you are <laughs> known for this annual roadmap where it seems to me you, you reveal far more than most software developers about the future I mean it isn't enough to tell us more but uh, <laughs> I presume do you uh, organize your thoughts for that in Omni Outliner? Oh, every year, absolutely. That's where, where every blog post that I do starts. In fact, is in on the outliner. Uh, yeah. Every blog post, every interview. <laughs> when we, when you told me, what, you know, that you wanted to talk about on the outliner for this interview, I started writing down my thoughts in on the outliner. Okay, well, what are some of the things we might we might consider talking about? So did I. I have an on <laughs> document right in front of me. That's our secret. Uh, if you want to spill anything that's going to go in that uh, roadmap for the future about on the outline, it is, it's just us. You could. You know. This is the perfect time. <laughs> well, we, I, some of the stuff that, uh, that I'm really looking forward to are, you know, you mentioned Apple Silicon and just sort of unifying our products a bit. Um, we're planning to switch to a unified purchasing model. So when you buy on the Outliner on any platform, you own it for all of them. Uh, we already do that with the subscriptions. I think I mentioned that just briefly earlier, but we're planning to bring that to all of the purchases. So whenever you buy on the Outliner for Mac, you now will own it for iPad or vice versa. And you don't have to be thinking about Oh, uh, which platform am I on? Do I need to buy it again? And so on. That's that's one of the uh, important changes coming down the line. That's very nice. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm not going to get any more out of you. Oh my! That, that... <laughs> <laughs> well, you will in January when I do the uh, the next roadmap blog post, of course. Okay. Okay. Uh, Ken Case, thank you so much for being on Fifty Eight Keys. Real treat to get to talk to you after years of emailing about on the outliner and things. Thank you. Oh, it was my pleasure. Thank you. Ken Case, developer of Omni Outliner. You can follow him on Twitter at K Case, and there's more about Omni Outliner, the app, and actually all of the apps we mentioned on omnigroup.com. Uh, thanks to, to Naomi Pierce for arranging this. I should say, there's a whole episode of 58 Keys enthusing, really, about Omni Outliner, and actually it's been one of the most popular editions of them all, which makes me particularly happy because I love that app. Everybody should use Omni Outliner. Each of this week's five interviews actually was planned out in Omni Outliner, and so is what I'm saying to you now. So hang on, it says, tell you we've still got theatre, television, novels, and non-fiction writers to go. Don't, don't miss them. I've obviously already seen them. I was there. I did the interviews. They are a treat. So subscribe to 58 keys and there's that bell icon thing isn't there that notifies you when the next interview is out do do the clicky thing of that thank you for watching take care of yourself and i'll see you soon